everyone. My name is Paul Third, and yes, the thumbnail is right, the title is right. Paul Third has finally had enough in Jackton Pro Tools after 15 years. This isn't going to be a typical Paul Third video. I am going to try and be as objective as possible, and I'm going to try and give you the reasons why I used Pro Tools for 15 years, why many people still use Pro Tools for 15 years, and then kind of combine that with the reasons why. I decided to go with Studio One, just so we kind of have an objective and level playing field. Let's just get the dirty word out there. Pro Tools is the industry standard. He said it. He f said it. Yes, I know, I said it. I said the dirty word. And many people may be asking, but, but how in 2022? How? And with the advancements of DAWs, can Pro Tools still be the industry standard? The reason it's the industry standard is because it's still the most commonly used in the industry. Now, if you think of it from like a mixing engineer's point of view, if your artist is working on Pro Tools and like their producer is working on Pro Tools, they're both working on Pro Tools, then it's probably a good idea that you get their sessions because many mixing engineers like to receive the artist's sessions. Now, obviously, if you're working with another DAW Studio, one Logic, like Reaper, whatever, Obviously, the way you have to work if they're working on Pro Tools is that you have to receive the stems. Now, there's going to be two things. They're either going to print the unprocessed stems, so they're not going to put any of their processing on, or they're going to print the stems and that's going to be committed and you just have to work with them. And that is truly one of the biggest and main reasons why Pro Tools is still so commonly used is the integratability between producer, artist, mixer. They're all kind of working on the same page and they can all share sessions. Number one, because it's too bloody manual. It slows me down. It's like it's very sludgy and stodgy. It's the words I think in my head. It's just it's very stodgy to work with. You have to do this shortcut, that shortcut, and that shortcut, and go to that menu. Why has everything got to be so manual? And the feature that I love in Studio One is the drag and drop. Drag and drop is your friend. Just being able to like go in your browse menu and be like, there's a plugin, and just take it and just go drag as a send. And the send is created. Pro Tools just seems to have a very set method of doing everything, which is probably why I liked it <laughs> for so long because it didn't ever really change. And I don't like change with my autism and I'm just like, yes. This is how we do things in here. Uh, but in Studio One, there's, there's multiple ways of doing things. I like that. I like the fact that like, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Don't know if I could say that now in the, in the politically correct world. Paul Third said he could skin a cat, but he doesn't skin more cat. You gonna skin my cat, Paul? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you've made me, you've made it awkward now. I kind of want to skin your cat now. Either way, either way, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Either way, there's a lot on the screen in Studio One, and many people may find that cluttered and prefer Pro Tools. But for me, having everything on the screen is just easier because I can choose what to hide and I kind of I know where everything is instead of it being hidden in lots of menus. However, however, another reason why I stayed with Pro Tools. For so long and why many people still stay with Pro Tools and why it is classed as industry standard is due to stability. Now, <laughs> many people will probably be screaming that Pro Tools crashes all the time on my computer, blah, 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 blah. Right, see for me, 15 years and I never really had any issues. And there is a reason why like so many studios like use Pro Tools is because there's an element of stability to it. Sometimes, right, when you add all these fucking bells and whistles, it sometimes could, like, and all these updates and stuff, it could sometimes make things a little bit less stable, right? There's more things that can go wrong, where with Pro Tools being so limited, it's just, like, basic bitch, and it's, it's got a way of working. And that is ultimately one of the key things when you're in the industry is stability. When you're working on one, two, three mixes a day, you're working sessions, you're recording, like, you just can't. Like, time is money, and you need to have a DAW that is going to be stable as a rock. Now, as much as Pro Tools has been stable for me over the years, it doesn't mean that it's been very accessible to me. Now, what I mean by that is iLock, and I, I hate iLock. I despise it. I've always hated it. I hate the fact that I need to have the stupid dongle plugged into my computer, and I hate the fact that I can only have one session of Pro Tools open on one computer. For example, I've not got internet. Like I can't work on Pro Tools, like on a train, because it's like, no. I need to see the iLock. Right, I need to be on your iLock cloud or in your online activation or whatever. So it's very limiting to me, where with Studio One, I don't have that issue whatsoever. There's no iLock. I can have 
Like, I don't know how many instances of Studio One you could have open. It's just like an install thing. I don't know. I would need to check that. But like, I can have that on and I can have that on. And I think I, I think I'm pretty sure I can have like three laptops running Studio One all doing different things. And I don't need to worry about the eye lock, which means that I won't be let down in a situation where I've not got internet and it's like my dongle breaks. Because the last thing you want is to get hacked. I mean, there's been times when people have been hacked and that's it. They have no access to Pro Tools and that's a scary thing. No, I'm not going to lie. This is probably the biggest, <laughs> probably the biggest reason. No, it's not because um, I'll get to the biggest reason, but I'd sort of probably say this is the second biggest reason why I decided to move was because I love the features that Studio One has in regards to plugins. I love the macro feature in Studio One. I love all that geeky stuff. I love how you can like create a hotkey, like a keyboard shortcut, and you could just like set it and be like, right, okay. If you use a certain plugin all the time, or like a chain of plugins quite a lot, you can just do a hotkey, bang, and it'll like just load it on your insert and it'll enable them as well. You can genuinely create a macro per track. So you can have like as many inserts as you're going to have, as many plugins in, and you can select the parameter and the function and different parameters and different functions, link them to one macro button, got everything set, and it, you can work a lot, a lot quicker. So if you have a template, you can have it set to your macro and you just be like, right, that controls that or that plugin, that or that plugin, that or that plugin, and you can just work a lot quicker. And as soon as I got in Studio One, I was just like, Paul likes to play. All work and no mixing makes Paul a naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> There's also a splitter tool as well. I can't believe I like, forgot to mention that. Think of it kind of like Wave's like studio rack. Not like you can kind of split everything up and you can like have plugins to like work on the lows, the mids, the highs. And you can even do like a, a separate bit for parallel as well. So you can have parallel compression without needing to have an aux and like sends and stuff like that. It's just really cool. It's like they've genuinely thought of kind of all of the geeky things that you could do with plugins that you'd want in a DAW. And obviously, I need to mention CPU as well. On my computer anyway, Studio One is better than Pro Tools, especially with Acoustica, like especially with Acoustica. To put it into context, right? 10 to 12% Diamond Transient, Studio One. Pro Tools, 25 to 28% for Diamond Transient. That's, that's crazy, right? I can do full mixing sessions. Like, I don't even do like my pre-mixing session anymore and split it. I just do all of the session in one and I can do uh, Streamlabs OBS and do a full stream of a mix without any real kind of cutting out and glitching because the CPU and the performance is overall better than Pro Tools. However, however, uh, there is still positives to Pro Tools. Kind of. <laughs> Not going to lie, I'm kind of running out of ideas. Um, you can record with it and it records. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a positive, I guess. <laughs> where with Studio One, I could basically do whatever I want. And really, for me, where it comes into its own is the composer options. Like, I got so excited when I got into all this, like, composer option stuff because I do find Pro Tools very limiting. Okay, the edit inside of Pro Tools is, is pretty good, it's pretty stable. I used it for, like, doing my podcast and stuff like that. However, for me, I want more. Like, as a composer, I want more. And the chord track function of Studio One, it, it's just awesome, right? I love the fact that you could basically type in all of your chords and be like, right, okay, there's all the chords in the song. And then you can get all your MIDI stuff and then you can get the MIDI to kind of follow the chords. And it just makes things a little bit easier and quicker. And you can even decide like to change the chords so the MIDI data follows like different chords and stuff. Or you could alternatively do like a one note melody in the MIDI editor and then make chords out of that using the macro function. And it's even got like a chord detector where you could just like go, dink, okay, tell me what chords they are. It does a quite a half decent job um, in detecting the chords, which could be handy if somebody sends you something and you just want to quickly go, right, I want to work on something. Right, okay, there's chords, right, let's work on something. And this is going to sound like stupid, right, because many other dogs can do this, but for me being a Pro Tools user, this, <laughs> this is a big thing. They've even got an input control where I can do my gain staging and flip the phase on each track, I no longer need to insert a fucking stupid trim plugin just to flip the phase. I can flip the phase on the track. Another thing I like about Studio One is they've thought about, right, there's times where, and this is on their own plugins, that you'd actually want to see the plugin, like the visuals of it on the track itself. So with the VU meter, you can have it set in a way where you can see all the instances. So you can have the input bit on, gain stage, 
of your VU meter to all your gain staging visually and really kind of those are a lot of the main reasons why I decided to jump ship. The thing that really, really just was like made me go nah. I'm off. They raised the price to £34 a month. I am not paying £34 a month. That's like close to like $45 or whatever it is. I'm not paying the price of my broadband for Pro Tools, like for a limited DAW that I was wanting to leave anyway. That's extortionate, in my personal opinion. But in the end of the day, guys, right, regardless of what DAW you use, it, it, it doesn't matter, right? I've went with this DAW because I think it'll work better for me. I can do stuff quicker, I could work on the fly more, and it's just kind of my preference, right? I've done a couple of mixes on it, I've set up my mixing template on it, and there was no issues whatsoever. I found it really easy to use, and there you have it. That's why I left Pro Tools. This is why Studio One is my DAW of choice. In the comments down below, let me know what DAW you're using, why you use it, why you like it. Your thoughts on Pro Tools, your thoughts on Studio One, and other things if you just want to fucking give me a little bit of engagement <laughs> in the comment section down below. Like the video. If you like, if you really like the video, consider donating a super thanks and all that lovely stuff. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you again next week.